Hello, and welcome back to the ATC TV Student Lounge. This is a show done by ATC students for ATC students to give our opinions in news, entertainment, and what's going on in our school. My name is Kai Regal. Guys, this is the last show of the year, and that's why I'm wearing white, you know, because it's New Year, so I'm desiring peace. So how are you today, Carolina? Hi, Kai. I didn't know you had to wear white for peace, but because I'm also, uh, I also want peace in the world. But we're also joined today by Benjamin, Josh, Andres, Kennard, Vincent, Beth, Diego, and Eric. And actually, this is going to be the last show where Vincent and Beth are going to join us. So thank you so much for helping this team. And we grew so much uh, and we wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. We're also joined today with our guest. Anthony Medina, who is the head coach of the basketball team at the University of St. Thomas. But first, let's move into our top three news of the week. Now, like I said, I mentioned before, we have a giveaway for regist registering. I highly encourage you guys to secure your seat in courses that work for your schedule and other responsibilities. If you enroll for spring by January the 8th, you will be entering for a chance to win some HTC swag or iPad or iPad mini. So I hope you already enjoy, uh, enroll, Kayo. Yes, I already enrolled. I was like, I'm not sure if I'm going to take a class. And I was like, iPad, for sure I'm taking class. No, just kidding. I was going to register anyways. But it did got me more motivated. I'm not going to lie. I'm really excited about that. Who knows? Yeah, I wish they did that before because I'm not taking classes, but hopefully you'll get it, Kyle. Now you can enroll today at hccs.edu slash now. Also, the National Safety Council advises everyone to enjoy fireworks at public displays conducted by professionals and not to use any fireworks at home. They may be legal, but they are not safe. So we have some, if you choose to use legal fireworks, these are some safety tips. So never allow young children to handle fireworks. Older children should use them only under close adult supervision. Never use fireworks while impaired by drugs or alcohol. Anyone using fireworks or standing nearby should wear protective eyewear. Never hold lighted fireworks in your hands. Never light them indoors. Only use them away from people, houses, and flammable material. Never point or throw fireworks at another person. And lastly, never use illegal fireworks. Now, this is, I really want to go to this event. Uh, there are so many Christmas events going on, Kyle, but um, especially during coronavirus, I like the drive through events. And there are so many, they, they did exist before, like, for example, this uh, Rudolph's light show in Hockley, Texas. And I think a lot of drive through activities are, are like overcoming from COVID. So I invite you guys to visit the Rudolph light show in Hockley, Texas. It's going on through uh, November the 1st until January 3rd of the next year. And the time is between 6.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. This is a paid event, so you can go check the prices out of the website. We're going to link it here over here in the video. So would you like to go to this event, Kyle? Yeah, uh, I was actually talking to my girlfriend about that today uh, because I'm usually in Brazil. So I'm usually like with finals and everything. So I end up going to Brazil and I never get a chance to go to the zoo lights and other places are having some actives like this. And this year we're actually going to be able to enjoy that. So I'm excited. Last year I went to the zoo lights, but I haven't gone to a drive through experience like this one. Uh, they'll, they, you will drive through lit, light tunnels, past giant Christmas trees, see snowmen and more in the winter wonderland. So please check it out. Now let's begin our first topic, which makes way to a great discussion. Resolutions and different New Year's traditions around the world. Now. Uh, in Colombia, I have three top because we have several. We have so many that um, I don't even know. My grandma has to tell me about this. But these are the top three. The first one is called the El Año Viejo, which is old year in English. And we light the sky up with fire. Well, since we light the sky up with fire at New Year's, we do it in an unconventional way. We dress up a doll that symbolizes the old year and past sorrows. 
and then we light it up at midnight. And like I was saying before, we were, we were talking before the show, this is not a small, like a voodoo, it's not voodoo. It's gonna be like a, a human size. And we fill it with newspaper and old clothes. And then we light it up and it's such a relief because you're letting go so many things from the past year. Now, the, the next one is very interesting. It's eating 12 grapes. So a grape for every wish you get to secretly make in the first 12 seconds of the new year. One second, one grape and one wish. And you must have your wish list ready so you can focus on getting the timing and swallowing right because there, you're rushing and you don't make those wishes and they won't come through. Now, the last one is the suitcase on the block. So we take our suitcases out for a scroll around the neighborhood at midnight and that attracts lots of travel for the New Year's. And that also helps us like get familiar with our neighbors and it's so funny to see people moving around. <laughs> So what kind of resolutions do you have in Brazil, Kyle? We, well, you know, it's funny because yours are really interesting and we have some interesting too that for you is probably going to be like weird. Uh, and I think that what makes it even more interesting is it different. Uh, in Brazil, we have one of them is uh, usually you choose the color of the underwear you're going to wear at that night uh, specifically for your desire. So I know, for example, if you're wearing red, you want love. If you're wearing green, you want money and, and go so on. You know, usually white, for example, that's why I'm wearing white. You can also do that with the shirt. Uh, you know, uh, if you have both, it's even more chances of being completed. So, so that's why I'm wearing white because I'm wishing like peace and all that. And the other thing too, in Brazil, we usually we celebrate by the beach. Everybody usually travels. I live by the beach. So we have a lot of fireworks. That's about 30 minutes of a lot, like I cannot even explain it's so beautiful and so many fireworks so since we are by the beach we have this thing that we gotta skip seven waves at 12 so cut each wave it's a wish so you go jump with a little wave you know when the wave comes and then you make a wish and then the other wave comes and you make another wish so and it's funny because at 12 we see a lot of people doing that so it's pretty cool and then a really good vibe uh, to see everybody uh, trying to accomplish the, their dreams. And yeah, I would like to hear from you guys what's interesting in your country they would like to share. You know, uh, Cayo, in, in Colombia, in my country, the people use uh, yellow underwear to have good look during all the year. So it's different than in Brazil. So, but I, I really want to mention about the celebrations in the different cities in Colombia. For example, uh, Bogota is a very big city but the people there is more quiet. They are quiet, they have some celebrations, but in the small cities, like my hometown neighbor, the people is crazy. They are very crazy. They have a, a lot of parties. Uh, they, they dance in the street. They have a lot of fireworks everywhere. So they, they, like, like all the people are, are on the streets, are dancing, drinking, eating, very crazy. It's like very different. But, in cities like Bogota, like the people more quiet, it's, it's like very different. With uh, me being a Nigerian, um, you know, we have big things over in Nigeria and Africa for our countdowns, but they're very big on carnivals down there and they're very big on uh, wearing masks, mostly animal masks and kind of dancing a lot. That's a big thing down there. So they follow those kind of things over in Africa and in mostly in Lagos, the main big city in Nigeria. So they have all kinds of, very similar to over here in America, but they're very big. That's probably the most popular holiday over in that city. But as far as when my resolution goes, I wanna to continue to do more uh, working out and exercising to stay fit, because as you get older, you wanna to try to stay as young, if you know what I mean. So, my recommendation to everybody is to try to work out more. Our tradition is to um, kiss at midnight. And if you're in New York, you watch the ball drop. I don't know if they're going to do that because of COVID this year. Probably not. Um, another thing, well, maybe they'll do it on Zoom. Um, we eat black eyed peas for good luck and cabbage, sorry, black eyed peas for money and cabbage for good luck. Some people believe black eyed peas is for coin and that cabbage is for the green green stuff. So eat your cabbage and black eyed peas. 
it's amazing so many um traditions in so many countries and yeah they like you were saying benjamin they merge together because we're latin right um most of us but let's move into our next section who do you have for today kyle so today we have Anthony Medina, and he's the head coach of the basketball team at the University of St. Thomas. And we're here to talk about fitness. How are you today? Doing well. I appreciate you guys having me on, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, we're really excited because, you know, Benjamin already said we have a resolution. I think everybody got some extra little pounds on the, on the quarantine. I think it's a normal process. So we wanted to ask you help. First of all, how can we even get into fitness? Man, that's a big question with a lot of different places that we could go with it. I do think a lot of people are having that, uh, that quarantine issue, I think myself included. The biggest thing that I give people in terms of advice for this kind of section of your life is just identifying what your goals are, realizing what it is that you want to accomplish and what are some realistic goals that you can set for yourself. Um, if it's been a while since you worked out, that's okay. You can take baby steps. And if uh, you're like Eric, who's huge, that guy, you, you look like you work out every day, man. Uh, if you're like Eric over there, um, your goals are probably a little bit different than they are for somebody that hasn't worked out in a while. Um, so just recognizing where you are and meeting yourself where you are to establish what you want to accomplish. That's a really good point. So what would you say for someone that never worked out in their life and they want to, or even the people that had worked out like me in the past, but haven't done in a while, what would be the first step to just get the feet in the door? Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. You want to do it safely. Um, so if uh, you went into the gym and you tried to work out with Eric at the weight that he works out at, I would imagine it wouldn't go very well, right? Um, we have to imagine, just kind of figure out where we are um, in terms of our own fitness and then establishing baby steps. So if it's been a really long time, you wanna start with a jog instead of a sprint, right? Get yourself into shape so that you can do things as safely as possible and help your body get acclimated to working out again. That's true. And one thing too, uh, what's the benefit? Because a lot of people think that being fit is just so you can get a nice body, but it's way more than just having you know, a, a nice body. So what do you think it's also important? People that work out a lot would tell you that, you know, they like the physical results, but most will tell you that the, the, the emotional, right, the response that you get from like mentally um, is just as important. And it's a hard thing for people to understand if you're not consistent. But once you develop a routine, you get yourself um, working out on a consistent basis, you'll start to feel the mental health benefits as well. Um, in addition to lifting or running or whatever it is that you're doing physically, if you're really invested in it, your diet will also match. Um, and having a great diet along with a great exercise regimen can be so good for long-term health, uh, so good for day-to-day, -day. just the way that you feel. Um, me personally, when I get out of bed, if I haven't lifted weights or ran or moved in a while, I just don't feel the same. Um, and being a little bit stronger, you know, having a little bit more support in my joints, it actually makes quite a difference. Yeah. So you, I, I was going to ask you exactly about that. Like how important is the diet? So I guess you, you answered the question well is keeping uh, some good food. I know it's, sometimes it's really hard, especially during this time of the year, uh, you know, Christmas and, and all that. So past this phase now, let's focus on the New Year's resolution. So now you don't have excuse because you don't need necessarily need to eat trash, you know, like fat food right <laughs> that's actually it's so funny because a lot of people say oh well you know like it shouldn't be your new year's resolution to to stay in shape it should be something you're doing all the time it should be continuous i 100 percent agree with that but the holidays do kind of drive us towards poor habits right we are traveling more typically um the meals that we eat are a little bit heavier we're less likely to be focusing on putting in the right things in and so to me uh, the new year can be a great way to hit the reset button, right? Refocus on the things that helped you get into the shape that you want to be in, help you uh, put yourself in a position to eat uh, quality foods um, and set yourself up for success moving into the new year. Yeah, I agree with that. It's time to focus in on the e new year, leave everything behind and now let's try to be healthy. But one thing that it's the problem right now and a lot of people are using as an excuse is, oh, because of COVID, I can't really go to the gym. But there's other solutions for that, right? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's funny because I we get that one all the time, right? Everybody says that, oh, I can't really get to the gym, don't really have the time. Um, I can promise you that a hundred push-ups at the gym, it burns just as bad as a hundred push-ups in your kitchen floor, right? Or in your bathroom or in your closet. Um, you know, going for a run is not the only way to get cardio exercise in. 
Um, you can do things in your living room. You can do things in your backyard. If you want your neighbors to hate you, you can do them in your front yard. Um, but it's uh, however you want to do things. But you just have to be willing to invest the effort and invest the time uh, because it's not really about the equipment. It, it's more about uh, the dedication to developing yourself. I agree. And 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 what do you think? Because some people, they just don't literally don't know where to start with. So there's a lot of uh, resources outside that they can look for it. Right. Could you give some example? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that are available. Um, me personally, you know, when I was younger, I used to love, you know, looking through Men's Health Magazine. It gives you such really interesting ideas. Women's Health Magazine as well is just kind of on the other side. Um, but if you Google basically anything, right? So if you wanted to be a runner, you know, you wanted to set yourself a goal, you know, building a plan towards a 5K or a half marathon or a full marathon will give you step-by-step instructions, almost like a foundation of how to develop to that place. You know, it won't just be going outside and running. It's going to be, you know, what is your stretching going to look like? You know, how do you maintain the, the mobility in your joints and your, your muscles? Um, what are the foods that you should be eating? How much water should you be drinking? Uh, what you should expect from your body? All of these things are, are things that you can find online, which is great. Uh, what I do recommend, though, for anybody that's going for a lofty goal, like a, like a marathon or trying to lift heavy or anything like that, always get with somebody, you know, some type of trainer or someone that can teach you to properly move, right? So if you're going to be putting weight on top of your body, you don't want to be doing squats. If you don't know what you're doing, you can hurt yourself. Um, so always have that in mind. Um, if you're really going to try to push it and go the, the extra mile, uh, make sure that you are um, safe and smart about it and, and seek real professional help if you're going to really try to push it. That's an excellent point. And that was uh, going to be one of the things that I was going to talk about because I've gone to the gym before and I've seen people, it was clear that they were doing the exercise wrong. I've seen kids, like 10 years old kids, like I don't even know what they were doing there, but they were trying to work out and that's terrible for their muscles. You know, they can hurt them pretty bad. And, and as you said, ideally, you got to look for professional help so they can advise you how to properly do the exercise. And my next question and last is about supplements. Do you believe they're good? They're bad? What do you think about them? I think supplements make a lot of sense for a lot of people. It's like, it's just like taking vitamins as long as you're taking the right ones. I think if you're putting now, like, don't get me wrong, like, don't be like shooting your stuff up with steroids. Let's not be ridiculous. But like, um, if you're putting in proteins, you're putting in vitamins, you take, you know, branch chain amino acids, there's a lot of things to help your muscles and your body recover from working out. Um, and so there's, as the word, words I keep using are safe and smart, right? You're doing, using them for what they're called. They're, use to su supplement your workouts, right? Helping your body recover, helping you stay fresh. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend using supplements as a way to be your primary source of gains, right? So it's not a shortcut, right? It's not a shortcut. There is no easy way. Um, so if you are going to take supplements, make sure that you're doing a little bit of research. Um, but more or less, the things that you'll be taking in a supplement are things that you can get from food. It's just in addition to the nutrients that you're putting into your body, um, from your, you know, three meals a day, four meals a day. Awesome. Well, Anthony, thank you very much. I really like talking to you. I feel more motivated. Maybe who knows, you know, next time we, we bring you in the show a year from now, I'm going to be as big as Eric, you know, I, you know what, let's, uh, I told you not to take steroids and I don't think, I think it's the only way you're going to catch Eric. <laughs> That's the only way you're keeping up with Eric. That dude looks like he's just a monster. <laughs> Eric, how much do you bench, man? At least 300 something. So I wouldn't even do that in pounds. I would do it in like people. I bench 45. <laughs> I bench 45 small children. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. There you go. Well, who knows? You know, maybe three years then for now, I'll get to the point where Eric is. But well, Anthony, thank you again. It was really cool to have you here. I hope people from home now are motivated, you know, to go looking for a better and healthier life. I believe in you, man. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Anthony. And as you said, try to look for uh, those trainings. Google has the answer. I was just doing that because I just started running and it, it does help me to relieve anxiety and the outdoors activities are so good since we're just uh, doing everything indoors. So thank you so much for your advice. And now we're moving into our next section, our gaming section. Vincent, what's up in the gaming world? Hey, thanks, Carolina. First, I just wanted to say thanks for having me on the show this season. And also to our viewers, happy New Year's, guys. Let's be glad that 2020 is finally over 
and hope that 2021 is going to be a million times better. Also, with the start of a new year, we have new games coming out. Around the beginning of January, we have Hitman 3 coming out, a stealth-based game and Prince of Persia remake, a classic PS2 game brought to current gen systems. All right, back to you guys. Thank you, Vincent. That's so cool for next year. Now, our last section is entertainment. Kyle, what shows are out that you want to talk, talk to us about? Uh, we have a lot of interesting shows, including Netflix about fitness. If you don't know what to watch, just go play like fitness. And now I got to go to the gym, so I'll let you guys finish. Bye. Well, I want to recommend a movie called Real Steel. It came out in 2011. It stars Hugh Jackman. It's a drama slash science fiction. It takes place in the future. But with uh, sports and fitness being our topic here, it's about a promoter who retired. And he's now going into a, a sport where he uses robots that fight. And that's now the big new thing instead of boxing. Now you have robot boxing. It sounds kind of silly, but when you watch a movie, it's very good. There's, there's drama and there's action. I think it was nominated for uh, Best Screenplay at the Golden Globe Award. But it's a good story. It's PG-13. Again, it's called Real Steel. I want to talk about the upcoming year and the new New Year's resolution. You know, everyone is going to set a New Year's resolution or want to have one. Why not use a year to start over and start fresh? You know, it's going to be 31 days in the, um, in the month of January. So why not use those 31 days to set goals and your aspirations you can reach and use every each one of those days to do something to work towards your goal to make you successful or get to the goal or where you want to reach in a few months or so. So... For those out there who want to set a New Year's re resolution, I suggest, I suggest that you do the 31-day challenge. And I would like to recommend the movie The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. It's, um, yeah, in the spirit of, you know, being a new year and doing new things, this movie's all about a guy who's in a very, like, safe job, but he never really, like, felt fulfilled. So he went out and started exploring the world. And it's a very good message, very, uh, you know, positive. It's, uh, and it's, yeah, I highly recommend it. Thank you very much, Diego. Well, guys, it's the time of the day to say goodbye, and I would like to wish you a happy new year, and I hope all your wishes, you know, being accomplished, and if you want to be fit, we already gave you some tips, so just follow them up, and you're probably going to be able to get to, like, Eric, okay? <laughs> I'm not promised, but I'm telling you, maybe, okay? Who knows? Thank you very much for watching. Oh, and I forgot. Stick to the end because we have the funny video or the meme of the week. I love you guys, and I will see you next year. See you next year. Bye. It's so exciting. A new year, a new everything. So also don't forget to send us your opinion. Also send us topics that you would like to discuss because we're starting fresh. We're going to have a new season uh, with new, new little things and new changes. So please let us know what you want us to change, what, what you want us to add, and if you want to be in our show. Also, don't forget to, to share this video with your friends and family so we can grow our audience. And I just wish you a happy new year and we'll see you on the next time on the Student Lounge.